nanohub.org. Online simulation and more for nanotechnology. Hello, Joe Sykos here. Welcome back to NanoHub. Today, let's take a look at how we can use tags to find resource content on NanoHub. And let's start out by looking at a recent resource. This was featured in the newsletter. And common to all resources is this area on the bottom here, which uh, shows tags. And you can see here, here's a list of tags for this specific uh, tool. You see active learning involves alloys, in particular melting points of alloys. Uh, uses a molecular dynamics technique for the computation, involves scientific visualization and, and workflows. Now, these tags are all determined by the contributors of the content. So some are tagged better than others. So let's take a quick look here. Uh, and you can see we have the yellow tags and we have these blue tags. Now, the only difference between the tags here really is that the blue tags uh, usually involve a larger volume of content and are somewhat more uh, vetted. Uh, not so much the usage and where the tag has been applied, but that it's a tag that many people might be interested in. Let's take a quick look now at the active learning tag. If we click on that, we can see here, this is all the resources. In this case, it's just resources and one group. All the items on NanoHub that have been affiliated with this tag, Active Learning. Now, Active Learning is a technique uh, for machine learning, but it also is a uh, teaching technique. And if you scroll down, look through the resources here, you'll see most of these probably involve uh, the machine learning application of Active Learning. But you can see right down here, here's uh, teaching in the uh, K-12 uh, arena, where this is probably active, active learning in the classroom. So same tag used for two different meanings. So that's kind of hard to avoid, but one can usually uh, easily determine the context. Now, over here on the right, you'll find this little area that kind of gives you a breakdown of what the items are that have been tagged. And, you know, in this case, again, we're looking at just resources and groups. Later on, we'll see a much larger collection of categories. And you can see here, there's two online presentations and uh, three tools. Let's just look at what the tools are real quick. You can just click on that and then all you see is the tools. And you can see here are the three tools that are using active uh, learning in some capacity. Now, let's go back to our resource here. And let's have a look now at uh, molecular dynamics. And when we go here, we're gonna see, wow, we have a really a large number of items that have been tagged. Quite a few tools, 51 in this case, and a good number of presentations related to it, uh, and also a number of courses. Now, again, you can click on any of these to, to get the breakdown focused uh, the specific category type. So let's just click on courses now here. Now. Courses is kind of like a little oddball on uh, NanoHub in that we have courses that are resource bases and then we have courses that are like MOOCs. And so when you select courses, you get both of them together. This removes this confusion of, well, what's the difference between the two types of courses? And uh, while the count's wrong, there you are, and you can see there's a good collection of items here that are all courses that involve uh, molecular dynamics in some uh, some way. Uh, we can look at all the tools. And here is a good number of uh, tools available on NanoHub, all solving different problems, but nonetheless are using the molecular dynamics technique uh, for the computation. Now, what we can do and uh, you can add in additional tags. And what this is, is essentially going to produce a result that is the union of these sets. And so let's say I'm interested in, in machine learning. Now, if you type slow enough, it'll fill in the list a bit. And you can see. Now, again, tags are entered by uh, the contributors who have you know, contributed the content. 
And sometimes there's going to be spelling errors. Now we try to clean these up and, and get you know this machine learning part of machine learning in the end. We can now select this and combine these two and hit search. And now we'll see, here are all the tools that involve uh, molecular dynamics and machine learning in some manner. Now you'll notice that our tool, the original one we looked at, the act of learning did not have the machine learning tag. So it doesn't appear here, even though it is, uh, it is a tool that you know, involves machine learning. So that's another thing to just kind of be aware, explore around with the different possibilities and the sets and things and when you're trying to find stuff with the tags. Uh, let's remove this and go back again. And here we are back to the original list. I'm just select this here and just look at all the resources only, for example. Now let's look at a couple specific tags as they relate to uh, tools. And what I have here now is uh, LAMPS tag as an example. And um, LAMPS is a uh, really well-known molecular dynamics code. And you can see on NanoHub here, we have 36 tools that are based on, on LAMPS or in some way involve LAMPS. And a lot of these tools use LAMPS as a computational engine under the hood, even though they're focused on a very specific uh, thing they might be solving for. And then there's a number of tools that are designed to work with LAMPS that will have the same tag. Uh, for example, either preparing of input for LAMPS or the processing of the output that results from a LAMPS run. So there are tools for working with LAMPS and there are tools that are using LAMPS as the engine. Now, another thing that we've been trying to focus on with, with tools, and this is for tools which have uh, additional resources, say a tutorial. Here's an example. There's this a network, uh, neural network uh, debugging tool that was uh, made available in NanoHub. And uh, if we go down here and look at the tags, so you can see this one it uses a computational technique, potential functional theory. Uh, so a little bit different than molecular dynamics here in this case. There's machine learning and neural networks and it's involving polymers. Now, the key here is this network debugger tool. And this is a tag that corresponds with this tool. So if we click on this tag, now we'll see here are the items that are related directly to the tool. And so we've been trying to do this for as many tools as we can and tools where we have uh, supporting materials to go along with the tool. So it's a little bit different than LAMPS because LAMPS is really this computational code that ends up in a lot of tools. And yes, you could find a couple online presentations there that are talking specifically about, about LAMPS and that set. Uh, and here, this is where it's specific to this tool. Now, one last thing here. If you want to start out by just searching with tags, let's look at this example here. You just go to nanohub uh, slash tags, and then you can start entering tags. Now, you remember uh, when I was pointing out that you could you know, type slowly here, let's take carbon, for example. And what you'll see now is a whole list of a variety of things. And maybe we're interested in carbon nanotubes. And there's then a breakdown. You know, some of the resources have been tagged even further with more detail. Single-walled carbon nanotubes versus uh, multi-walled carbon nanotubes, for example. So it's beneficial to look through what uh, kind of appears here and use that as kind of your guide when you know, shopping for content. And we can go for a quick example here around the way out. Here is all the, and we have quite a bit of content available uh, on NanoHub for carbon nanotubes, for example. And so now you can continue to refine your search. All right, with that, that concludes uh, this short tutorial. And thank you. Look forward to seeing your usage on NanoHub.